Hey friends, it's Ed with a new scratch building idea for an Experimental Airlines design I call the Synapse. I have two versions of it here. The red one is a folding wing with folding wing tips and the blue one here has fixed vertical stabilizer wing tips and is a unitary wing. I chose a flying wing for this one for compactness and lightness. Flying wings have some positive characteristics but also some negative ones too and I sought to maximize the benefits and reduce the drawbacks as much as possible in making this a very simple to build, very inexpensive and easy to balance and fly. And one of the advantages of flying wings is that they can be very efficient in flight with minimal amount of weight and a maximum amount of lift. But the drawback is the balancing can be very tricky as the CG range is very narrow and putting all of your gear inside the wing can be problematic. So one of the things I've done to minimize that issue and also to leverage the EA building techniques of the arm and wing and the tubular fuselage is to completely separate the functions of the wing from the cargo carrying location and so that the wing is manufactured by itself and has only the two servos in it and then the fuselage pod can be made of any of a variety of configurations, different lengths, diameters, payloads, etc. and it can be moved accordingly to match the center of gravity that the wing itself demands. It has a 48 inch wingspan and is derived from two 30 inch arm and wing sections and can actually be manufactured from a stock off the shelf arm and wing cut to make the nose angle or better still it can be manufactured from scratch from the foam board with the sweep in place. It has a 10 and a half inch aerodynamic cord here although it comes from a 9 inch uh, arm and wing cord so that's a 7 inch airfoil plus a 2 inch elevant. I chose this particular wing plan form with a 135 degree nose angle which is a good mix of efficiency which increases with a more straight across wing but also stability which increases with a greater sweep of a wing. This particular sweep configuration maximizes the amount of wing and the usage of a single 32 inch arrow shaft which fits across from leading edge to leading edge like this almost directly at the center of gravity. The center of gravity should be right where the spar is or just forward of it. So structurally it's very sound laterally like this but also in a longitudinal axis due to the location of the spar. It also allows the use of just one spar which is economical and keeps it simple. Because their center of gravity is at a fixed location which I'll include in the build videos, just about any configuration of fuselage pod and cargo you wish to build is acceptable as long as the CG falls right there. That means you can detach this wing and build any number of fuselage pods and move the fuselage pod forward or aft in relation to the wing to get the correct CG. In order to keep the construction economical and simple for all of us, I've used a pretty standard arm and wing airfoil with a more or less flat bottom. The maximum camber is at 40% and is about 10% thickness of the cord. It does not have any washout, which would be difficult to attain with this building technique and any reflex is obtained from trimming the elevons upward. You may just want to use a simple fuselage pod with a receiver, a battery, and a motor like this just for fun flying. You may wish a little bit more elaborate fuselage pod like this one with a motor, battery, and an FPV setup as well. Or maybe you want to go all the way with landing gear, motor of course, lots of battery space, and a GoPro or other bigger camera or payload on the front. Oh, okay. oh, you got the, uh, oh, the flight. This version you see here, which has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery and is uh, hand launched with this fuselage pod is 1,200 grams. Probably about 2,000 grams would be an acceptable all up weight. The only other design parameter is that the thrust line from the motor should be more or less coplanar or, or parallel to the cord line here and should intersect the uh, airfoil at about 40% cord. So this one shows about a three degree down thrust and that will give very stable, acceptable control characteristics under glide all the way up to full throttle. It doesn't tend to climb or descend uh, with throttle changes. This wing, by the way, can be built as a unitary solid wing with fixed vertical stabilizers at the wing tips. Or for a truly compact package, the wing can be constructed with uh, folding vertical stabilizers like this that are velcroed up in place for flight but they can, can be folded down and then the spar is removed through the leading edge right here 
the wing is hinged at the center, it can be folded up like this for transport and uh, compact storage. From a purely safety standpoint, the best way to launch a plane like this is probably a side throw, either like a frisbee or from the opposite side. But I've experimented with some football throw, I might call it, launches like this. And it looks dangerously close to the propeller, and I gotta admit, I was pretty anxious about the whole thing, but I did some videos which shows that the prop clearance with this 10 inch prop was actually about 10 inches there. Even holding it very close to the prop, as long as when it's thrown, the hand follows through. I can't say I necessarily can recommend that method. If you're confident doing the side toss, I would probably use that. But the football throw hand launch is a consideration. The fuselage tube is logically built out of a tubular fuselage technique using Dollar Tree foam board. This is a, a two inch nominal, so it's two and a half inches total diameter. And I've used up to a three inch diameter and it works well. Here's the fuselage pod that's simply a, a two inch nominal diameter uh, foam board tube that I've ramped up in the rear. The ESC is here for cooling, and the center of gravity is just forward of this point so that when it rests on the ground, it doesn't tilt back. It will actually sit upright like this. This is a Turnigy NTM prop drive, 1400 kV motor. This is very, very well balanced, adequately powered, about 450 watts with a 10 by five inch master air screw prop. This has a removable battery tray uh, with additional, the electronics are mounted on that tray as well, so this can be completely removed, the electronics worked on, and then slid back inside like that. Here's a very similar fuselage pod, same speed control setup, little different motors, this is a 1000 kV 10x6 prop, and a FPV gear with a simple board camera, 2.4 gigahertz transmitter, also, also all of this uh, located on that same tray so that can be slid out for additional access to the battery and electronics and then push back in place for flight. Here is the larger fuselage pod. This is a three inch nominal fuselage tube. So it's about three and a half inches total diameter. I've used a piece of balsa block right here to act as the GoPro mount as well as the nose gear mount. This is not steerable, but it wouldn't be hard to accomplish. The main gear is simply zip tied to a piece of balsa, which forms the platform here. And then the batteries fit in between those pieces of balsa and a little tray right there. The receiver here is in the front. Transmitter is not currently installed on this one for the video transmitter. And the uh, wing, just as the other rubber bands down to some carbon fiber aero shafts that are located inside. And uh, the rubber bands pass through a hole to access the tie down right there. The back is left open for circulation and access on this one. And this is a Turnigy prop drive as well, 35, 36, 1800 kV with a, a smaller prop, an eight by six for additional ground clearance. In order not to need to make the main gear too long, the prop will still obtain a good ground clearance even upon rotation and flare for landing. So far this plane has turned out to be truly compact as was intended and pro when properly trimmed it's a joy to fly, it's very responsive, it's easy to take off and land and doesn't seem to have any terrible characteristics. Being a flying wing, they do require pretty aggressive uh, control throws on the elevons, and therefore an improperly balanced plane with, for example, a CG too far forward does require a lot of increased uh, reflex to be trimmed in, and that does detract from the flight uh, efficiency, so it's important to get it trimmed properly. Fortunately, having the fixed CG on the wing allows you to move the fuselage fore and aft as needed to accomplish that proper CG. So I had a lot of fun building these. It's a minimal amount of parts, two wings, one fuselage tube, that's three pieces of Dollar Tree foam board, packing tape, and hot glue. Each airframe came in for under $10, and I uh, hope you'll consider giving it a try. Cheers.